In two other videos, we took a look at so-called alpha and beta decay. And here we're going to look at a decay chain uh, involving, in this case as an example, uranium-238 uh, that involves a combination of these. So we have here uranium-238. It has an atomic number of 92. Again, it must be 92, otherwise it's not uranium. And it's going to decay into lead-206. That's a zero with a total of 82 protons. And it's going to happen through a chain where by the time we get to the end of the chain, so here's the top of the chain in the upper left in this diagram to the left, all the way down when we get to the bottom uh, with lead, that chain is going to involve the release of eight alpha particles and a total of six beta particles. And those beta particles uh, should have a minus sign. There's going to be electrons that are being released from the nucleus as a neutron converts into a proton. So up here at the top left, we have uranium-238. It's showing here it has a half-life of about four and a half billion years, maybe closer to 4.468 billion years or so. That's the total half-life for uranium to turn into this guy over here, you know, lead 208. But again, it doesn't all happen at once. These particles are released one at a time, and each of these steps have characteristic half-lives. So for example, the first step in the process is uranium will release one alpha particle. There's a symbol for alpha right there as it goes from uranium-238 into thorium-234. So we can write that step here, uranium-238 with an atomic number of 92 goes into, turns into, thorium-234 with an atomic number of 90. And if you go back and look at our video on alpha decay, you'll note that this is consistent with that idea. We have a helium nucleus, an alpha particle that has two no neutrons and two protons. The, so the atomic mass decreases by four. And with the release of two protons, the atomic number decreases by two. So that's the first decay step. Thorium-234 has a half-life of 24 days. And what it's going to do is that 234, uh, with an atomic number of 90, is going to undergo radioactive decay into protactinium. And protactinium has also an atomic weight of 234, but it has an atomic number of 91. So the atomic weights here are the same. Uh, we're losing a beta particle, which really doesn't doesn't affect the total uh, atomic weight very much, only by a trivial amount. But we have a neutron that's converted into a proton by the release of that beta particle, and so the atomic number goes up by one. So that's shown here as this step of beta decay as we go from there to there. And then we're not going to write this out, but protactinium, protactinium will undergo beta decay into uranium-234. Notice that we're back to uranium, but we have a very different weight. We started out with uranium of 238, and now we have uranium with an atomic weight of 234. That'll undergo alpha decay into thorium-230. Another alpha decay will turn that thorium into radium. Another alpha decay will turn into radon, which is a very important noble gas in terms of uh, environmental concerns about uh, sources of radioactive um, uh, contaminated air that can lead to issues of lung cancer. That will undergo radioactive decay and alpha decay into uh, polonium, and then polonium can go into lead. Lead will go into bismuth. No, notice that this is lead of an atomic weight of 214, not our ultimate goal of 206. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Bismuth will, will turn back into another form of polonium, uh, and that polonium will undergo uh, alpha decay. Uh, but look here, the bismuth can also undergo alpha decay into thallium, and thallium can undergo beta decay into lead-210. So there are a couple of ways to get to lead-210. So it's kind of a complex decay chain. There are a couple of routes uh, to get us to lead-206. I'll let you work through this map, but no matter which set of arrows you follow, if you start here with uranium-238 and end here with lead-206, 
you should always end up counting up eight alpha decay um, decays and a total of six beta decays. Let's take one of these chains. Here's one alpha decay here. Uh, we'll just count the alphas. Here's a second there, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. Uh, we're going to go through some beta decays if we follow this chain. Here's a seventh alpha decay to get to lead. That'll go through beta decay to get to polonium. And then an eighth decay will get us to lead. So we just followed one of those paths. Let's follow the very same path and count the beta decays. So for the beta decays, we have one over here as thorium converts into protactinium. And then a second one as protactinium converts back to uranium. We don't have any uh, beta decays for a while until we hit lead over here. Here's a third beta decay and a fourth. Uh, no beta decay here, but then a fifth and then a sixth. And then an alpha decay will get us back to lead. So tracing that same path, we got six uh, alpha uh, beta uh, particle decays and eight alpha decays. If you followed a different path, and there are a couple of different ways to get to lead 206 from uranium 238, in any of those cases, in all of those cases, you should end up with eight alphas and six beta particle decays.